feedback I've gotten over the years from attendees is that while the material is powerful and it impacts their businesses, they just don't get enough. So they say to me, if only we could spend more time with you and the other presenters and really pick your brain, absorb the knowledge that you have to share and get hands-on training. So to satisfy this need, I created Success GPS programs. If you're here, it's because you want to succeed. Being the fact that it's a hands-on workshop, we are getting a ton of value in terms of gaining more clarity for our business and approach, uh, approaching ways to wow the clients and customers that we do have. Some of the Success GPS events are short, single-day experiences, a couple of hours, but our premier event is an extended, hands-on, experiential retreat. Business owners can come, spend three full days locked down and learning everything they need to know to be successful in business and in life. Everybody up, I'll come out and get you. You over there too, up, up, up. See, if you already sit down, then you've already flunked, which means you've already given up. Industry leaders that are here today that are so authentic and passionate about being of service to others, uh, it sort of opens my heart and my mind to being really possible and staying on the right track. I've spent 25 years listening to thousands of speakers looking for the best of the best. Of all these, I handpicked this lineup of amazing speakers because I knew that they would bring it and that they would put it all on the line with their heart and soul to create an amazing experience for our attendees. In addition, all of the presenters are passionate about helping small businesses and entrepreneurs succeed and take the time on and off the stage for every attendee to get what they need to go to that next level. So, so I say show up, follow up, and lift up. Give back and don't ever, I don't care where you are in life, if you think you haven't arrived somewhere to where you can't give something back, you're wrong. It's the exact opposite. The minute you start stepping, bring someone with you. Don't even hesitate, get here, do it. Be here, be the first one signed up, be, sit in the front row, get all the information and you, it will be mind-blowing. It'll just be, it's a game changer to be here. It's just a game changer. Wow. So don't miss the experience live and in person. Go to register at successgpsseminars.com for our upcoming event. And in the meantime, get ready to be inspired. Oh, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, I don't get to speak uh, in front of entrepreneurs as much as I, I'd like to. I, I've been with Infusionsoft for over five and a half years, and uh, I started speaking with entrepreneurs, but then life just changes and you have different roles. And so it's, it's awesome to be able to spend some time with you to see your excitement. But I want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever been to an event like this or been with other entrepreneurs and listen, listened to them tell their story and you thought to yourself, wait a second, I'm more driven than this person. I have more passion than this person. I might even have more focus than this person, but this person is so much more successful than me. How many of you have had that experience? And you thought, wait a second, why is that happening? What is it? And the question I have up here is why some businesses thrive while others barely survive. And if you think about it for a moment, the best product does not always win. When you think about, oh, if I could one day get my hands on a McDonald's cheeseburger, my life would be complete, right? No one has said that recently, I don't believe, but their marketing changes everything. You see, I was at an event where I was sitting there listening to one of our, uh, one of the, uh, one of our customers at Infusionsoft that does over a million dollars a year. And I was sitting down and I was listening to him. And I thought to myself, and please don't think less of me, but I thought, wow, he's not that great. I thought he's making over a million dollars a year. I was expecting more. And then he said this statement. He said, I will outmarket you. And I realized, wait, that's the difference. He understands marketing. And you look no further than our last presidential election for a moment. How many of you are familiar with story brand marketing? Anyone familiar with story brand marketing? A couple of you? Um, look at the, Don Miller talks about the last presidential election. Okay. Think about it. On the count of three, everyone yell out what Jeb Bush was going to do. Okay. So, okay. So, I feel like I'm at one of his rallies. So, um, 
with all due respect to Jeb. Okay, think about Hillary Clinton for a moment. She was gonna, she was gonna do like 150 things, right? And what was Donald Trump gonna do? What was, he was gonna make what? He was going to make America great again. Now, this is by no means I'm saying this presidential candidate should have won or this one, but I want you to think about the way they marketed for a moment and think about Donald Trump for a moment. He wanted to what? Make America great again. Hillary Clinton, her slogan was, I'm with who? Her. I'm with her. If you think about your marketing and why some businesses thrive while others barely survive, understand this message that Don Miller at Story Brand teaches so well, and that is this. You, your goal is to make your customer the hero, not you. Your goal is to make your customer the hero, not you. The moment you become the hero, the customer becomes disengaged. And you think about that with Donald Trump, the hero was whom? Yeah, the, the people are getting out of bed. I got to go make America great again. Hillary Clinton, I'm with her. And the psychology is different. So think about your marketing and are people willing to be or enroll you as their guide? Because listen, people are looking for a guide. They're not looking for a hero. The most important person in everybody's life is what? Themselves. And so the best product doesn't win, the best marketing wins. So this isn't a discussion on politics, but if you study the political, you go back, think about Mitt Romney for a moment. Mitt Romney was, he was disconnected from the American people. And look at his net worth compared to Donald Trump. But what was, what was Barack Obama going to do? He was going to bring you what? Yes, he was going to bring you change and hope. And his message was clear. And people said, yes, I want to be a part of that. Arguably the most par popular president, not arguably, the most popular president to ever exit office was Bill Clinton. So his vice president should have been a shoe in right? For the president of the United States. But who was Al Gore's biggest opponent? Al Gore. I don't even know where the phrase Al Gore invented the internet came from, but, but along the lines, Al Gore inserted himself as what? He was the hero. He was the one that was going to be the hero. And George W. Bush came along and he says, no, I'm going to bring you change. You study the politics of America and you look at their marketing and you can see why some thrive while others only survive, and it is no different in business. How are you establishing, establishing yourself as the guide to help people be successful? Because everyone wants to know what is it that you're going to do for them. And it's not make you the hero, it's make them be the hero. And that's why they thrive. Well, let's take a closer look at this for a moment. So my wife and I, we have nine children. And it's mostly for tax purposes, but we, um, we, we, this, uh, our, our oldest last year graduated from high school, this one right here, Reagan. And she went to be, um, she was getting ready to go to college and she got a phone call from a friend of a friend of a friend and said, Hey, would you be willing to be a nanny for this retired, uh, Hall of Fame baseball player in Orlando? and he'll pay you this amount a month. And so she's like, okay, yeah, I'll do that. And so she went to be a nanny. And she, I went out there, and I was speaking at a conference, and, I, and she, um, I went and visited her, and the home she was a nanny in was about 30,000 square feet. So that's, that's bigger than our house. And so we, um, she's in this home, and I, and I went into the house, and I started walking around the house, and I looked at the pool, which was nicer than most resort pools, it was on a lake, it was incredible. And I said, Reagan, what is it that is most difficult about being a nanny to these kids? Now, she wasn't the only nanny, they had four nannies, but I was like, what is it that it's so difficult? 
And she walked me around the house and she showed me the pool and she showed me their bedrooms. And some of their bedrooms was like two stories with a rock wall. And she turned to me and she said, Dad, nothing really impresses them. She goes, I take them to Disney and they go, really, this is all Disney's got? You know, I take them to different places and nothing really impresses them. And I share that with you because as we talk about you being the guide and helping your customers be the hero, keep in mind that people are harder and harder to impress than they've ever been before. So we're going to talk about what is it that you're doing, not only as the guide, but what is it that you're doing to impress them. And understand this, there are patterns when it comes to entrepreneurship. There are patterns when it comes to being successful in business. We work with tens of thousands of businesses at, at Infusionsoft, and we've spent over the last 15 years studying them. And from the accountant to the attorney, to the dentist, to the doctor, they're, they're all the, the patterns are the same. And I remember years ago when I was speaking to a group of attorneys, I was sharing with them the same pains that dentists have, and they were all nodding their heads, and they're like, yes, how do you know our pains, you know? And I'm like, well, you know, we as attorneys, and then I realized I wasn't, and an attorney, but the point is, the point is, the patterns are the same. So, we think about this quote for a moment. Obstacles are the things we see when we take our eyes off the goals. So what goals are we setting? These are two, uh, these are a couple of children that I have, and Nicholas is on the left and Chandler is on the right. And we live in Arizona. And Arizona's a warm place, right? It was 118 degrees when I left. That, that's fairly warm. And um, my wife has a rule that you have to wear shoes when you go outside to visit or play with a friend. I don't know if you can see this very well, but Chandler, Chandler couldn't find his shoes, so he opted for Ziploc bags. And so he's going, my wife pulls up and she goes, Chandler, what are you doing? And he says, well, dad said if I can't find my shoes, I can just wear Ziploc bags. And, and she calls me. I'm like, no, I promise I didn't say that. But he didn't see any obstacles. You see, and we'll talk more about this, but as you get clear, you don't see the obstacles. You do what it takes to be successful at Infusionsoft, this is one of our core values, and that is this, we believe in people and their dreams. We believe you can be successful. But one thing we do better than anyone else as entrepreneurs is we limit the success that we can have. I remember my wife came to me one time and she goes, hey, um, I wanna take the kids to Disneyland this year. And I, I, I started my career in, in education and I taught high school for 10 years and I, I quit and went into a full-time commission-based, um, basically an entrepreneur. I had my own book of business that I was building. And my wife turned to me and she said, I want to take the children to Disneyland this year. And, she, and I said, no, Cassie, we, we can't do that. And she goes, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, we, we just started a new venture here. And she goes, yeah, but you said you left teaching because you could make unlimited amounts of money. And I said, I know. And she goes, so start making that money because I want to take the kids to Disneyland this year. And I was like, oh, no, this isn't possible. And she goes, no, it is. And you got to figure out how to make that happen. And so, so a couple weeks later, a couple weeks later, I get a phone call from an organization that I was working with. And they said, hey, we're excited about what you're doing. We'd like you to come and speak to a group of people here. And we'll pay for you to come. And, and you can bring your family. And I said, where, where are you located? And they said, in Anaheim. I hung up the phone and I turned to my wife and I said, sweet Cassie, you got lucky. <laughs> and she goes, no, no, what do you mean? And I said, no, listen, we're going to Disneyland, but it's because you got lucky. And she said, no, it's because I was focused and I knew what I wanted and I'm not done. We're going to New York City next because I want to see the Rachel Ray show. <laughs> and I said, okay, listen, Cassie, we need to temper things back a little bit. I just started this new business. And she goes, no. We're going to make this happen. A few weeks later, I came in from work. She was there. She said, hey, I need to talk to you. I said, about what? And she goes, well, I was on Rachel Ray's website. 
And there was a question on the website, and it said this. Do you have embarrassing parents? And I said, I don't, but my children do. And I told them about you and the games you play with them and how you tease them. And so Valerie Bertinelli's flying out to film you, and then they're flying all of us to New York City to be on Rachel Ray's show as the world's most embarrassing parents. I said, no, Cassie, I'm not doing that. She said, no mess with my trip to New York City. So we, um, there we are on the Rachel Ray show. Don't, don't Google that experience for sure. But when a decision is made, the universe conspires to make it happen. When a decision is made, when you get clear and you understand that you will be one of those businesses that thrive and don't simply survive. So as we think about that, here at Infusionsoft, well, at Infusionsoft, that's where we started. Those were our headquarters, and things grew rapidly for us. And why did they grow for us? Because we adopted the booklet that's in front of you right now, Lifecycle Marketing. That changed everything, and we'll get into that so that you can see how it can impact and change your business, whether you use Infusionsoft or not. And, and I'll share with you, as, as Jennifer said, we'll, we'll share with you an offer at the end, but if you, whether you use it or not, you have to adopt life cycle marketing, and that is this. Think about a typical customer life cycle where you're out there generating interest. You sell to which leads? Yeah, you sell to the hot leads. You get new clients, you sign relief, and what do you do? Start over. So you have 100 people that raise their hand and say, yes, I'm interested. 10 of them become customers. What happened to the other 90? Yeah, they go in the trash can. I remember talking to someone who owned a security company. They did uh, built or installed security systems in people's houses. And I said, do you hate it when another company goes to the neighborhood? They would sell door to door. I said, do you hate it when another company goes and knocks in the neighborhood before you get there? And he goes, no, we love it. I said, why? Why do you love it? And he goes, because they knock at all the doors, get them thinking about security systems, and then we come and sell them. <laughs> Think about that for a moment. How often are you educating your competition's customers because you just don't have the system to follow up? There is lost opportunity. You have lost traffic, you have lost leads, you have lost clients. How many of you would like to know how much money you've lost? There's always like one person that would be like, I think I know everyone else is like, no, I'd rather not. But I want you to think about your business as a strawberry field for a moment. And every strawberry represents a lead. And you have good leads and you have bad leads. That's the way we view it. But in reality, it looks like this. Some are ready to buy, could be ready, not ready today. And then, of course, they are never ready. But think about yourself for a moment. How often have you had the experience where you've gone to a car dealership or into another store and you've walked in and you've seen the car you wanted, the color you wanted, the price you're willing to pay, and the salesman comes up to you and says, can I help you? And you say what? I'm just looking. I'm just looking. Because people will buy when they're ready to buy, not when you're ready to sell, right? And so what you're doing is you've got your picture or your, whatever that's called, water, yes, that watering thingy, and you're out there and you're trying to water your strawberry field and you're getting some results. And you are having some success, but the reality is, if you can make your field look like that, that's the goal. And then the harvest looks like that. So what do you need to remember? First, stop letting your profits rot in the field. Because I promise you, you have profits rotting in your field. And that's why I commend you for being here, spending time with Jennifer going, yes, I understand that I do, I'm missing out on opportunity. And Jennifer saying, I know how to help you capture and grow that opportunity. And your, your desire to be here and the fact that you're sitting here saying, yes, Jennifer, I understand, I get it. I understand that I'm not living to my full potential, but guess what? We have all done very, very well over the course of our lives, so we've mastered the art of procrastination. True? How many of you have mastered the art of procrastination? Raise your hand. Yeah. <laughs> he will raise it later. 
You've mastered that art of procrastination, right? You know that uh, I know I, I, I'm going to do it. I've got to do it. But the reason and the value of what Jennifer's doing is she's going to help you force yourself to be great. Force yourself to greatness. It's amazing. I work with a lot of individuals in Infusionsoft, and it's amazing when someone gets engaged, what they start eating. Like, we eat terrible at Infusionsoft. There's, we have Coke machines. We have cereal. There's so much food. And then when someone's getting married, all of a sudden, all of that stops. They're like, I'm not eating like that anymore. I'm going to have pictures that will be saved forever. I will only eat like this. And then we're like, all right, pass the Captain Crunch. But anyway, we, we have this experience. Why? Because they know they have a deadline and they want to be forced to adhere to the deadline. Most people can't do it on their own. And it's not because they're bad people, but they realize it. And that's why it's so important that you go, yes, I know I can't do it on my own. That's why I'm seeking help. And that's why Jennifer Baker is such an incredible asset to me because she gets it. And so she can help me get there because I know I'm letting this happen. Look at number two, invest energy and resource to solve the problem. Guess what your greatest resource in the world is? Rhymes with lime? Yeah, time, your time. And you're here doing that, but it also, you have to have things happen automatically. And we'll show how that works. If you want something done right, you what? But in reality, you need to build a process. You need to have a process in place. That's why we talk so much at Infusionsoft about life cycle marketing. The first three components, and this is covered in your book, but I want to cover it on a high level here. First three components, target and position, attract interest, and collect leads. First, target and position. Think about how your target market. Now, the biggest challenge we have as entrepreneurs is we want to expand that target market too far. How many of you have ever made the exception to your target market and said, okay, I don't normally work with these kinds of individuals, but I'm going to make the, an exception. How many of you have done that? Raise your hand. How many of you would love to do that over and over again? Raise your hand. <laughs> They're like, oh, it was the worst experience ever. Because you understand and you are clear on who it is you help. But you think, well, well, let me go back for a moment. You go, well, certain people just don't, I, I don't, I want to help everybody. And certain people just need my help. But let me point out a couple things here first. When you know your target customer, you know their basic characteristics, the pains, problems, and challenges, the benefits they seek. But what's the most important? Look at that up there for a moment. Which, what's the most important thing up there? Who is what? Yeah. Who is not your target customer? Don't be afraid to declare who it is you help. Just right before I got up on stage, I was talking to Jennifer and I'm like, look, and we were talking about different people that we work with at Infusionsoft. And I said, well, this individual helps these people and this is what he does. And she goes, yeah, I don't do that. And she's very clear. And she's like, this is exactly who I help. This is how their lives are blessed. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life helping and serving this community. And so she's crystal clear on who it is that she serves and who it is she doesn't serve. But that's a challenge, right? Because when we're, when we're trying to pay the bills, someone comes along and we want to expand that. But the clearer you get, the better you will be and the more successful you will be. And think about this for a moment. When, when I was speaking at an, at an event years ago, there was a lady there that pulled up in my dream car. And I, and I went there and I said, how many does this seat? And she said, it seats 11. And I counted how many kids I had and I was like, that's perfect. That's my dream car. Where did you ever find that car? And she said this, they're everywhere. And I said, no, they're, they're not everywhere. I've never seen this car before in my life. And she goes, I promise you, they're everywhere. Guess what? 
they're everywhere. I start seeing them everywhere. And so as you go through this exercise in this workbook, and as you start unpacking what it is that your target market and their basic characteristics and who is not your target market, I promise you the clearer you get, the more successful you'll be and you'll realize, wait a second, they're everywhere. Why? Because this, look at this for a moment. People trust the clear and distrust the ambiguous. When you're clear in your company and you're clear in your business and you know exactly who benefits from you, people will begin to trust you more and they'll want to do business with you because people trust clear and ambiguous. Anyone from Florida in here? Raise your hand if you're from Florida. Okay, you, have you ever been in a lake where there are alligators? Okay, raise your hand. Okay, they went in, they went in a lake with alligators. Raise your hand if you think they're crazy people. Okay, right. That, that's why I was, when I was, when I referenced when I was in Orlando, I was speaking to these entrepreneurs and I said, I said, how many of you have swam in a lake with alligators? And everyone from Florida's like, yeah, we've done that. And I, and I, I had them put their hands down and I said, everybody else, who thinks that 20% is really crazy? Everybody else raised their hand. Why is it? Well, my daughter, when I was visiting her in Orlando, this home, it was on a lake. And in, in Florida, there is the lake and there's land and there's this something in between that's just like, I'm going to be late. It's just this, whatever it is, right? And I walked out there and they had this path. And I turned to my daughter and I said, have you seen any alligators out here? And she goes, I haven't seen any big ones, but I've seen some baby alligators. I'm like, well, baby alligators have come from bigger alligators. But she's like, I said, have you been in this water? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, don't, don't ever go in that water again because you don't know when you cannot see. When How many people are afraid to jump in the water in the Caribbean? Nobody because they can see what's in there and they trust it. The clearer you are in the messaging of your business, the more people will be attracted to you that trust you because you solve the very problem that they have. You solve their pain and that's what's key. Um, we work a lot with uh, Dave Ramsey. I don't know if you know who Dave Ramsey is, but he does uh, entree, a thing called Entree Leadership where he declares it right on his website. Think about your website. When people see your website, can they easily determine what it is that you do? How you solve their problem? Because I promise you that you will begin to attract the right people. Think about the lead magnets that you have. How many of you have a good lead magnet? Raise your hand. How many of you know what a lead magnet is? Raise your hand. Let me unpack that a little bit. A lead magnet is a way for people to say, I think I'm interested in what you do. And you have to make it solve a pain that they have in their life. How busy is everybody? Is everyone busy? Yes, with a lot of things that are taking their attention. I got an email just the other day from an individual who who is marketing their webinar and it was on the synergy of listening. Did I? The synergy of listening. How listening helps your business. Did I log on to that webinar? No. Think about this lead magnet for a moment. If he would have just changed it and said, look, I'm gonna share with you three ways not listening is impacting your business. I'm gonna show you three ways that if your people are listening, your business will grow. I'm gonna show you three ways that you're losing customers because you don't know how to listen. If someone sent you an email and says, I'm gonna show you three ways that you're not listening so that you're missing on customers, you're gonna go, wait a second, I'm listening. What are they talking about? That is a pain point because everyone wants more customers, lead magnets. And you can go through the booklet and see and they'll talk you through how you do that. And then you have to capture their information. 
How many of you have a current CRM right now where you put your people or your customers, clients, prospects, information into a database? Okay, a few of you. You have to do it in order to, the key is what? It was mentioned earlier today, the magic is in what? The follow-up. Follow-up works. Think about their specific pain points. Back to this Dave Ramsey website that I referenced, he has three different things they can click on, three different lead magnets. Based upon what they click on, they get a different message. So what does Dave Ramsey do? Does anyone know what he does? He helps people, yeah, get out of debt, improve their finances, that's what he does. So he knows, okay, if they're having this problem, this problem, or this problem, based upon where they click. Because at the end of the day, everyone cares about whom? themselves. I remember when I was with an insurance company, they were raising my homeowner's insurance. And I called them and I was very frustrated. I said, why did you do that? And they said, well, we had a lot of claims from other people. And I said, so you're raising mine? Yeah, we just got to offset the risk. I said, well, no, I'm gone. Because everyone cares about how you are helping, how are you serving me. I know that sounds terrible, but that's the reality of the world we live in. Think about all the people that come to your web traffic or your website and leave. People that call your business and you don't capture their information. There are ways that you're losing leads. Even if your business is small, there are ways that you are losing leads today. You have to have a lead capture process for all customer interactions. Think about, this is one thing we, we do at Infusionsoft, it's called Snap. So, business cards, they just, I don't carry them either, but I collect them. So, one thing we do with Infusionsoft is when you collect, how many of you have ever come home from an event or someone and had this stack of business cards? And so you set them on your desk and you're like, I'm gonna look at these one day. And then, they, and then you're cleaning your desk and you're like, I'm gonna put them in a drawer because you can't throw them away because you know that there's money there. And so you don't want to throw them away because you'd be throwing away money, so you just keep them there and you feel good about it. And so one thing in Infusionsoft is we have an, a part of the app is something called Snap, to where you click on a business card, you take a picture, and it automatically uploads into your, your CRM, your database. So imagine this for a moment. You go to an event and you pick up 45 business cards. You take a picture of each business card. It's uploaded into your Infusionsoft and then you have it programmed for three days later. An automatic email goes and says, hey, it was so nice connecting you with, at the, or connecting with you at the event. When's a good time that we could talk further? And everyone that responds, you know they are a, a hot lead. People that don't respond, well, you, there's nothing lost. But at least you did something with the information. Now let's talk about three components to the sell. The first one being this, the nurture piece. People buy from people they what? Like, is that true? It's not. It's not true. People buy from people they trust. How many of you know someone that you really, really like that you would never buy something from? Raise your hand. Okay, so we, we do have to like the individual, but more importantly, people buy from people they trust. 86% of consumers are less trusting of companies than they were five years ago. True? Think about it. Today, you see something on Facebook. Do you even believe it anymore? I remember my wife was watching the news one night and she turned to me and she goes, how much of this do you think is real? Five years ago, were people looking at Walter Cronkite, or it was a little 50 years ago, when Walter Cronkite spoke, everyone just said, that's true. And most of you looking at this group are just going to have to take my word for that. My, myself included. I didn't spend a lot of time watching Walter Cronkite. But... The point is, how did he finish his newscast, by the way? Does anyone remember? And that's the way it is. So he declared, here's the news, and that's the way it is. Today, we watch the news, and we're like, whether it's Fox, CNN, it doesn't matter. 
everyone's going, yeah, I don't know, is that true? I wonder if that's true or not. People are less trusting than they've ever been. Combine that with this. Here's a picture at Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where the Pittsburgh Steelers play. Notice the scoreboard for a moment. What do you not see on the scoreboard? Okay, the score. It took me a while to even locate the time. Now, granted, this was probably during a timeout or halftime, and so they didn't feel like they needed the score, but people are bombarded with so much information that if it's not relevant to them, they're not interested. In fact, I, have you ever watched a sporting event where the, I was watching a college football game and the kid kicked the field goal, and they're like, the kid doesn't even get the field goal. It was actually brought to you by an insurance company. You're like, well, I thought, I thought it was the kid who kicked the field goal. I was like, no, you're in good hands. You know, that's, it's a totally different world. Think about this definition of nurture for a moment. If you want to build trust with your prospects to where they will do business with you, the third definition to bring up train and educate. Your prospects will act exactly how you allow them to act. Your customers will behave in a manner that's consistent with whatever you've established as appropriate. You're like, well, I want my customers to behave like this. Then you need to nurture them. I want my customers to buy this product. Then you need to nurture them, to bring them up, train, and educate. My wife is an amazing individual. We have those nine kids. If they amount to anything, I promise you, it will be because of my incredible wife. But I will get a phone call from my children, and I'm at the office, and it is 20 minutes away from my home. The high school is four minutes from my house. The junior high is two minutes from my house, and the elementary school is five minutes from my house. I work 20 minutes away, and I will receive a phone call from my son, who's a junior in high school, and say, Dad, can you bring me my homework? And I'll say, T Tyler, I I'm, in, I I'm at the office. Not to mention, I've been in a meeting where he just has kept calling me and calling me. Finally, I just leave and I'm like, Tyler, what, what is, what's going on? He's like, I need you to bring my homework. I'm like, Tyler, I'm at work. I can't do that. Can you call mom? And I'll be like, Dad, mom's not going to bring my homework. She's told me I need to be responsible and that I need to be accountable for my own work. You will just bring it to me. And he's like, but if mom does bring it, she's going to make me do chores because she says this is inconvenient for her, so I've got to do something inconvenient for me. And I don't want to spend the afternoon doing chores. Is there any way you can get out of your meetings? I'll be like, all right, I'll be right there. But the point is... The point is, my wife has established a certain level of what is acceptable and what is not, and my children know it. And they'll come up to me and whisper and say, like, hey, Dad, can I have And I'll be like, come on, what are you doing? And they're like, well, Mom, is, Mom wants us to be successful. You enable us. They don't say it like that, but the point is, <laughs> the point is, we need to remember that as entrepreneurs, as, that our customers will respond and behave however we accept them. I, I remember when I was in the financial services industry and I was talking to uh, a producer who was doing seven million, or excuse me, seven figures, over a million dollars a year. And I said, what is it that you do? And he gave me several things and he said, one of the things is I never wait more than 15 minutes for anybody. And I said, really? He said, I promise you, if there's nothing else that you do, just adopt that one thing. And I said, okay. And so I had one appointment on a day, a lunch appointment with a very high-end, wealthy client who I was hoping to be a client. And it was 1214. And I was like, oh, I only have one minute left. And, and then it hit 1215. And I texted this individual and he said, Sorry, I'm running late. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. And I texted him back and I said, Sorry, I'm, I'm really busy. Um, 
we'll have to do this another time. And when I said I was really busy, I, I had to go home and make three hours of cold calls. But the point is, I was busy. And he said, I'm so sorry, we'll reschedule. We rescheduled for the next week. At noon was the appointment. At 11.50, he called me and he said, hey, I just want you to know I'm already here at the restaurant. I'm sitting at this table. I'll be ready when you get here. And he became one of my most, for me, it was one of our most successful relationships. And hopefully for him as well. But the reality is, how are you nurturing your prospects? Are you even thinking about it? Are you even thinking about the message that you're sending them? Why? 81% of sales happen after five or more contacts. 85% of the time we stop after one or two. Why? Because we do this. We buy or trash. When in reality, we should be selling or sorting. Some people just aren't ready yet. And you say, yes, but I need them to be clients right now. Yes, but you will need them in six months as well. And then it comes time to wow them. You deliver and wow, you offer more, and then you get referrals. How do you deliver and wow? How do you set yourself apart from everybody else in the world that has so much noise in it, how are you setting you apart from everybody else? Let me also offer this suggestion. How many of you have heard that content marketing wins? That it's all about content marketing? It absolutely is. But I wanna take it a step further. Engaged content marketing wins. They have to be engaged in what you're doing. And so Jennifer comes here to this event and she knows that all of you have shown that you like her content, which is great, but you're also engaged and meaning you're committed and you understand that. And then it gives her the platform to deliver and wow and set herself apart from everybody else. And the more exposure you give yourself to people, they will see, they will see who you really are. And they'll see what you're really about. The people that are trying to quickly get you to do something that maybe you don't feel comfortable doing, and they're not interested in the long-term relationship. I can tell you that Jennifer's interested in a long-term relationship. And in FusionSoft, we want a long-term relationship. If somebody quits after three months of using Infusionsoft, it is, it's of no value to us. We lose money on that. So we understand, wait, we've got to deliver and wow. Because I promise you, in the social media that we live in, in that world we live in today, you want to make sure you're delivering and wowing everybody at every opportunity. People are in buying mode when they're buying from you. People are in buying mode when they buy something from you. So what should you do? Yeah, you should sell them more. How many of you believe that what you do will actually change the lives of the people that become your customers? Raise your hand. So why should you not sell them more? Because selling, you're simply serving them more. And you're giving them more opportunity to be more successful. Will people be more successful with or without your product or service? With. So the more access you give them, the more you give them, the more successful you will be. Who is your number one problem? Yourself. You're like, oh no, I don't want to offer more because I'm afraid that they'll run away and say, I was so excited about what I do, I was trying to give too much. I'm not going to do that. At Infusionsoft, one thing we did is we created a small business success kit, and we took the teachings of an individual by the name of Dan Kennedy and, and Michael Gerber, and we combined them, and we created this success kit that gave, gave great content on how to be successful as an entrepreneur. And so what we did, we offered it to people as they were purchasing Infusionsoft, our average transaction size increased by 27% because we were just offering more. Think about what it is you do. 
Is there something you could do to offer more, to give more value? Not just for the sake of, oh, I want to give them more, I want to make more money. No, what value can you give? What value can you bring to make the experience more transformational, transformational for them? Because people are looking to transform their lives. I mean, when people enroll with Dave Ramsey, they're looking to transform their lives, right? They want, they want to quit living in uh, a lot of debt. They want to pay off their student loans, all of those things, right? And Dave Ramsey will say, look, people are looking for a transformational experience. Me and Jenny Craig have a lot of work to do, right? Because Jenny Craig is also appealing to a transformational experience. So you need to get clear on what your prospect's life looks like before they met you and what it looks like after they meet you. Are you clear on that? Are you clear on before and after? How do they feel before they've met you? How do they feel after they've purchased your product or services? What's their life look like before they've met you? What's their life look like after they've pr purchased your product and services? And you need to remind yourself of the after state of your prospects and customers. And then it will open the door for you wanting to freely give more. And then it opens the door for the advanced referral strategy, which is simply this ask for them. I, you ask for them. That's it. You ask for them. Now, why is it that you want a referral? I don't like calling them referral pers referrals personally. I prefer calling them recommendations. Because when I talk to a prospect or a client, I'll say, who do you recommend that would benefit from, from these services? Who, are you, who would you recommend as refer? Because refer puts you in like the one down position, right? And so when you work with, when you work with Jennifer Baker and she says, and, and after you're done with her, after you're done going through her services or whatever it is you spent time at her event, who is the one who benefited the most? You did. You benefited the most. Think about your customers for a moment. Do they benefit from what you take them through? One, two words I want you to eliminate from your vocabulary, and I know this is going to sound really, you're going to be surprised. Eliminate the words thank you. Eliminate the words thank you. Don't say thank you anymore. You're going to say, wait, don't say thank you anymore. Change those words to glad I was able to help. Glad I was able to help. Why? Because you just saw a software up here called Text Me Leads, right? And they're saying, look, I'm going to help you get more leads and I'm going to do it all for you for $49.95 a month. I'm going to do it all for you for $49.95 a month. It's going to change your business. It's going to help you grow leads. How many of you need leads? Raise your hand if you need leads. How many of you would be excited if you could have more leads, right? And so you're like, yes, I want to do that. And so then how does that feel when you're so excited about the software and then the person selling you the software says, thank you so much. It feels like, wait a second, what, what's happening here right now? You were simply glad to help. Now, I'm not, certainly not asking you to show a lack of gratitude. I'm certainly not asking you to think, oh, you know, I'm beyond anyone here and putting yourself in an elevated status. But I want you to consider the true nature of the relationship of you with your customer. And when you say thank you all the time, it devalues what you do. You're saying thank you when in reality, you're glad to help. You're so grateful you could assist them. That's what, that's the impact. And when you have that type of mentality, when you ask for referrals then or recommendations, then people understand, wait a second, you are about something bigger than yourself. I know Jennifer's about something bigger than herself. Just listening to her talk and as we were sharing things or some thoughts before I even came up on stage, she is about something bigger than herself and she is glad to help. 
It's not about the money for her. It's about a mission. And she's like, I have a vision and a purpose. And that's what it's about for me. And when you feel that, you're like, yes, that's awesome. And it's not, oh, thank you. Thank you so much for buying this from me. I can, I can pay. How many of you have ever sat across from somebody who was selling you something? And by the time you were done with them, you felt like you needed to shower. And you're just like, I'm not sure what's happening right now, but this just doesn't feel very good. Right? And it's because of that type of uh, relationship that they've established. Focus on the after for your customers. Focus on what they get and benefit from you. And be glad to help. Be glad to have helped them see things differently, use a product or whatever it is that you do. Then have the courage to understand that you are simply asking for recommendations because it's not about the money for you. It's not about selling more product. It's about changing people's lives. And when you have that type of mentality, asking for recommendations becomes natural. And you're thinking to yourself, yes, I want to help people. I don't want to just sit here and say, oh, please have them give me more referrals. And then when someone offers you referrals, and I've done this, we've all done this, but think about it for a moment. They say, could I have some referrals? And they give you the referrals. And then you go, oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Think about the relationship and how you've devalued what you've done. Understand this. Each of you have a certain talent and ability that is unique to you. And it is that talent and ability or product or whatever it is that you are going to use to help others have a transformational experience. And don't stop, don't stop with that individual. Ask for recommendations and see what happens. You take it a step further and you can use it in a way that's systematic, not accidental. How many of you get referrals right now? Raise your hand. How many of you think you should get referrals? Right? We all think about that. I believe there are two reasons, two main reasons why we don't want. I don't think we know what to do with them after we get them. We're like, okay, I got these referrals. And then two, we're just afraid. We have this fear, which goes back to the mindset that we're in. And then, but when we have them, we like having those 20 referrals sit on our desk, right? And someone's like, are you going to call them? No. If I call them, they may say no, and I'll be down to 14. I feel so much better about those 20. But the reality is, is you're looking for customers because you're looking to change more people's lives than just yourself. So how do you fix it? You got to get clear. And this booklet that you have, if you spend the time in this booklet, you will see that it will help you get clear. You spend, you can spend hours on this and you'll see that you are now more clear than you've ever been before. You have to make it happen automatically. You've got to simplify your systems or, or choose a system. And that's what we do. So think about the grade if you're to grade yourself. How good are you at attracting, selling, and wowing your current customers? Is there area for improvement? Yes? Yeah. It's like, it's, it's, it's incredible. And, 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 and by the way, I don't mean to sound harsh to the women in the room, but you are far more critical of yourself than, than, than the men. And you're like, Chad, I can't believe you did that. You can't say that. You can't say, oh no, it's a, it's a different world. I've been married for 20 years and I, I just see I have three daughters and six boys and I watch my daughters beat themselves up. I watch my wife beat herself up and I'm just like, really? All right. Even to the point, I have a son who came out and he's like, I can't believe this. I'm gaining weight. This is awesome. And I have a daughter that came out and she's like, I can't believe I weigh the same as him. And he's like, 121, baby. And he's like, wait. And she's like, don't, what are you announcing that for? He's like, I'm so excited. I'm gaining weight. But the point is, the point is, you grade yourself, but then you see where the opportunity is to improve. You say, this is where I am now. I'm not going to live in this current state forever. I will be better 
in a few months, in a few years. I promise you this, the person at the bottom of the ladder looking up, moving forward, is far better than the person coming down. And so you have to make sure that you commit to yourself, and that's why I applaud you for being here, commit to yourself to climb those steps, to climb that ladder, because I promise you this, you do the little things that are suggested in this book, you will look back three months, six months, nine months from now, you listen to what Jennifer Baker tells you and you follow it exactly, you'll look back three, six, nine months and you'll go, I cannot believe how much further we are. I've been on, I have some boys in scouting. Any, any, any of you had kids in scouting? Yeah, terrible experience, but um, I just, I know it's a good experience. Yeah, I just don't like camping or hiking or that kind of stuff. And so... I love the outdoors, I just want to sleep in a hotel. And so, but when I, when I go on long hikes with my boys, because I want to be there, and so they don't know my true feelings, I'm just like, come on, this is scouting, this is hiking, this is what it's all about. How many more boys do I have? You know, and I'm just trying to get them along the path, but they're like, Dad, I can never get there. I'm never going to reach that spot. And you just keep hiking, you keep moving forward, and then all of a sudden you stop, and you turn that young boy back, and you look at that where you've come, and they're like, I cannot believe that. We really came that far. And that's why I'm so excited. Jennifer was telling me about an event she's having in the fall. I'm so excited for all of you to be there because that will be your first opportunity to look back over a significant period of time, several months, maybe not super significant, but several months where you can go, wow, this is how much further I am. And so you may be giving yourself D's and C's, maybe some B's. All of you are different. I've got nine children. Each one of them is different, right? Right? I have a son who comes in his grades. I have a daughter who has learning disabilities, um, struggles with anxiety. I have a son who doesn't. I expect A's and B's from you, son. I'm sorry. He came home. He had one C on his report card. I was like, son, it's unacceptable. My daughter came in right behind him. She's like, I got all C's and D's. We're like, yeah, high five it up. You know, and so it was just a totally different experience. She's in, she's in learning development programs. He's, and she's trying to be totally mainstream. It's different. We're all different. So don't you dare sit next to the person or look to the person next to you and think, I can never be them. You don't want to be them. You want to be you. And you just want to continue to progress and be better and better. So grade yourself moving forward. But you've got to also understand that somehow, some way, you have to make it automatic. In today's competitive, I love this quote from Entrepreneur Magazine. In today's competitive environment, automation is not a luxury. It is a requirement for keeping a competitive edge. Now, I want you to change the way you think about automation for a moment. Automation is not what happens when you call the bank, okay? That's called misery, right? Where you're like, I've got to, I've got to push 800 buttons before I even talk to a real person. So you just start hitting zero as soon as you get there, hoping that somebody will answer the phone, right? That's not the automation I'm talking about, nor is it what Entrepreneur Magazine's referencing. It's this. The requirement for keeping a commitment, in fact, the benefits of automation are so numerous, you can't afford to ignore them. Automation is this. When somebody, when you reach out to somebody and you send them an email or a text message that is based upon what they're interested in, when you market to them based upon their behavior. If they are watching your videos that you are sending them, then you treat them differently than if they're not watching the videos. It's not about, I'm going to keep automation. I got it figured out. I'm sending them six emails a day until they either become a customer or hate me. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to get them. No, it's about making things personal. It's about making things relevant and making it important to them because it's what the pain they have. But it has to happen automatically. What does automatic look like? That's what automatic looks like. When you can actually live a life that you want to live and not be a slave to your business. What does Michael Gerber say? Work on your business, not in your business, right? And it has to happen automatically. And that's, and that's why we have Infusionsoft's actually babysitting the kids right now. Um, I'm just kidding. But, and you have to simplify your system. So that's, 
That's what Infusionsoft does. It's an all-in-one sales and marketing software to, to keep your database together, to contact your prospects and customers and treat them differently. So based upon, Tom, I'm just gonna give you some examples of people that have taken lifecycle marketing, they've taken it, and they have applied it with Infusionsoft. So Tom Force, before he was with Infusionsoft, he was doing $49.50 a year. After Infusionsoft, he went to $42,950 a year because he was keeping his database, he was following up, he was adhering to lifecycle marketing. The Rocket Company, 200,000 before Infusionsoft, 2 million after Infusionsoft. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are users of Infusionsoft. And the reality is this, our goal, our goal in Infusionsoft is to make you successful. That is our goal. Infusionsoft, if, if you are a brand new business and you have no contacts, no customers yet, then it may be too soon for you. You take that book and you work on that. You listen to Jennifer Baker and you follow her and you start getting those contacts. And when you get the, when you start having those contacts come in, and I don't mean thousands, but when you start having 50, 100 contacts come in, then it's a time you're like, I need, I need Infusionsoft. Infusionsoft, when you do enroll with Infusionsoft, this is what happens. We take you by the hand and we get you started and up and going. We give you a marketing automation plan. So we take your plan that you're currently using and we're like, okay, we've got to automate this. And we give you suggestions of what you could be doing better. We, you have a coach that walks you through all of this. We give you campaigns to help deliver and wow your customers. Think about this for a moment. If you just were reaching out on their birthday, or if they bought something from you and three months later you send them an email automatically saying, hey, I hope everything's going well. When you buy something from somebody, do you ever expect them to reach out to you again? Never. My, my sister, my sister uh, was in a bad car accident about 20 years ago and she had a ton of medical bills and she uh, hired a personal injury attorney. And the whole process took about three months. At the end of the three months, or maybe it was six months, I can't remember at this time, she hated the attorney. She's like, worst attorney ever. Was he really that bad of an attorney? No. But she never heard anything from him during the whole course of the experience. If he would have just sent her an automated email. Now, keep in mind, I, I subscribe to some of the greatest marketing minds in the world. And they send me automated emails. And even though I know it's automated, so I'm still reading it going, oh, hey. I, and I'm like, oh, wait, that was automated, you know. But it's okay because it's exactly what I needed right then. You have to have a game plan to make this happen. We give you, we, if you want to do webinars, we'll give you access to that, how to, how to build out the campaign for webinars, if you do con, con, um, consulting, what to do there. And then of course, Infusionsoft Mobile that helps you manage your contacts and automate marketing from anywhere. And with integration programs, if there's anything that we don't do, like for go to meeting or whatever it is, we integrate with it to make it easier, easier, and easier for you. Our goal in Infusionsoft is to make it easy. So regardless of where you are in your business, at Infusionsoft, we want to make sure we help you succeed. Thank you so very much for taking the time. It's been a pleasure to be with you. And I will be here today if anyone has any questions. My schedule is pretty tight, so I won't be able to be here the whole event. But I'll be here today if anyone wants to come and see me. Bring your order form. I'll be over here to the side of the room. Thank you so much for having me out.